Everyone, please warm up your monads. It's time. Uh, Haskell is very competitive with C, and on some benchmarks, it is faster. How is that possible? With all that Haskell does on top of the raw C code, how can it possibly be faster? In this episode, I talk about two advantages of Haskell that can make it faster than C. So typically, this is what I say when it comes to this type of stuff, which is when someone says X is faster than C, what they're actually saying is that I didn't write C that good, but I'm really good at writing this one piece of code. And so therefore, C is slower than Haskell, or X is faster than C because I can't write good C. That's what it means, okay? It's like literally, it is, it's literally the original skill issue, but I'm willing to hear it out. I'm just saying this is skill issue number one. This is your classic skill issue. How is Haskell faster than C? My name is Eric Normand, and I help people thrive with functional programming. So usually languages are compared to C, right? It's kind of like the standard benchmark yep. language yep. to say like, oh, this language is only a factor of two slower than C, right? Yep. Most languages are slower than C. By the way, every time you see someone do a comparison of languages in C, you know what they do almost 100% of the time? They always do the worst version of it, right? Like you'll see like JavaScript is only 1.5 times slower than C, and it's always doing a bunch of math equations. And you're just like, dude, the reality is that your web server Everything you do isn't a bunch of math equations. Is it surprising that JavaScript can compete on a small function with C? Yeah, it's not that surprising because it eventually gets JIT. It gets turned into just like as, as best representation as the engine can make to run this one small function over and over again. Is there anything impressive about that? No. It's not, right? Because you're because that's not what happens. What really happens is that you have a piece, you have an object that you build. You go and do an await. You go and get more information. You add stuff to the object. You go and do another await. You come back. You push some stuff into arrays. Then you take that crazy object in arrays and you turn it into a string. Meanwhile, every single response that comes back, not only do you parse its JSON, you also send it to Zod to be validated in which Zod is not fast. It then goes through and compares the structure and Zod to ensure that it actually is a correct object and validates at runtime that its type is the type it expected to be. And so, of course, that's where all the slowness comes from. It does not come from a couple math equations. It comes from all the other stuff because now that you've held on to an object over two separate uh, awaits, you've held on to the object long enough that maybe it got promoted from the nursery cache to the intergenerational cache. And maybe it goes from the intergenerational one to the long-term one. You don't even know how long you held on to that object. And the next thing you know, now you have major GCs all over the place causing large slowdowns. Maybe you're running on a multi-core machine, but maybe you're not running on a multi-core machine. The difference in performance on a non-multi-core machine versus a multi-core machine is huge in JavaScript because all the garbage collection optimizations rely on multiple threads. And when you don't have that, it just gets completely destroyed in performance. And so whenever I hear these things, that's what I think of, right? Is here is an unrealistic case in which we can perform nearest the same speed. And um, when, especially when you get into like the more higher level languages, you have this idea of like, well, we lost a lot of speed but you don't have to deal with all these problems mm -hmm. that C has. Like, um, you know, you don't have memory leaks because we have a garbage collector. You don't have to deal with like when to, when to free the memory. Garbage collector supremacy is a real thing. Uh, the fact that you don't, like there's, there seems to be nothing more exciting than garbage collector plus arenas, right? You get to control a small amount of memory in a very fixed way, or it's just garbage collected. Like to me, that is like practically the perfect level. Of, of memory management because for the most part you don't care about most memory but there are some memories in which you want to care about and to me that is like that's 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 a real thing you want to because then you can make the parts that you need fast fast and the parts you don't care about you don't solve by cloning which ain't fast and you know just all these niceties add up but it's at the cost of speed mm -hmm. then you have something like haskell that is often faster than c in the Haskell mentioned, and it's faster than C. Let's go. It's the ultimate language. The benchmarks. It's very close to C when it's not faster. And it's not like, oh, it's twice as slow. No, it's like right there. It's like within a few percentage of C. And very often it's on the other side. It's faster than C. I'm doubting so hard right now because the only way I can possibly think Haskell is faster than C is if somehow they figured out how to do things in less machine instructions.
right? That their compilation is actually just genuinely better comp. I, I, first off, I don't even know if, is Haskell a compiled or is, it, is, is there a runtime? I thought there was a runtime, which means it's not even compiled, which makes it even more confu- confusing. But if it is compiled, okay, so it's compiled. Therefore, it uses LLVM. So is it getting like somehow better? Better? It's either or? Well, damn, that's confusing. So what's going on? Okay, let's see it. Okay, so there's actually two things, at least. These are the two things I know of that are going on. Uh, the first is optimization. Haskell has a lot of knowledge. So the Haskell compiler is given a lot of knowledge about the program in the form of types usually. And those types are... Algebraic types can, uh, with an expressive type system prevent all sorts of issues in pure functional programming. This is the p- uh, functional uh, program about to happen. Um, than what the types in C are. Not only is it the types, but it's also, there's a lot of the semantics of Haskell. He's about to make a math argument. Here it comes. Give the compiler a lot of leeway, let's call it, a lot of wiggle room for optimization. One of those is... Le- Again, by the way, all of the optimizations he's about to mention should be doable in C. Okay, I'm just going to throw this out there. I'm just going to throw it out there that anything that you do should be doable also in C. I, I have a very, I, I, I'm, having a, I'm having a big doubt coming on right now easy evaluation so in c it's strict evaluation you put a function there um, you know it kind of executes one line at a time you know is how you should think of c executing so it's going to call this line everything on this line is going to finish before we get to the next line right yeah but in haskell that's not the case what you can have you can call something give it a name and um it doesn't actually do anything yet right and so the compiler can actually analyze it and a lot of times figure out hey you never use this in this branch right so i'm not going to do it yet until I know that you're in this branch, and then I'll, I'll do it. Or it might, it might never do it. Like the analysis gets so complex, it might just remember how to do it, and in case you need it, it'll be there, but it won't do it. So there's a lot of stuff that uh, you could, in theory, hand tune if you were a, 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 very, uh, a, a, a very good at optimizing as a programmer, you could hand tune and say, oh, there's a certain case where I won't need this value, so I'm just not gonna calculate until I really, really need it. But it, in, in practice, that gets so hard. It gets so complicated. Is that a skill issue? Did, did he literally just claim skill issue? I mean, I'm not going to say, like, again, garbage collectors often can lead you to more, like, better code than you doing it in Rust. And it's a skill issue. It's fully a skill issue. The thing is, in, in Rust, you'll, like, I've seen, I've made Rust programs slower than Go programs because I'm not great at Rust. Pro- like, I, I wasn't the best person ever on it. Because I was trying to, I was still in the learning Rust phase, right? And so I was not able to write a server as fast as I could write it in Go, just simply because some level of garbage collection prevents all cloning. Whereas you find yourself making clones and doing things in a different way in Rust because you're not good at it. So there is like, most certainly, I do not doubt cloning or skill issues play a big role in how fast you write your code. That you're just not going to do it, right? And so Haskell can do that. Haskell just does it in the program. It doesn't have to think about it, right? So it can do some analysis. It can figure out when something should be, is going to be needed anyway. Might as well just calculate it now. You can do some analysis and say, oh, it's only needed sometimes, so I probably won't do it yet. And, uh, and then sometimes it just punts and just says, well, I don't know how to analyze this. But the net effect is that that is faster. Another thing is um, it can do a lot of, because, because everything is uh, pure, it can do a lot more, uh, optimizations of like moving code around and inlining and um, doing more stuff at compile time that can't be done in C. Um, and th- those is that statement true? It's all LLVM, but is that I mean, I could understand that if you know everything is peer, there's some things you could do that would be different, right? Like I, I do get that 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 there has to be some level of optimization that you can do there. But also, if everything is peer, it also means you're creating a bunch of new objects. You have to forever create new things. That unless if it's, I know, I'd love to see some examples. Uh, Unless if, like that, so that's like where I'm struggling with with is, there has, if you're making something like that, there has to be copying or some other thing going on, which is just notoriously slower than, you know, mutating memory. Could be the optimized uh, way. Okay, maybe, maybe 
Show us, yeah, I want to see the video. Let's see, let's hear, let's see if he does it in the video. Those are typically thought of as like inlining people, optimization, that kind of stuff. But uh, Haskell can has a broader range of maneuvers that it can do that let the code get optimized really well. And that's nice. Uh, so what I, what, what I hear from him, what I'm hearing here is that if you are an average Haskell developer or an average C developer, it's easier to write better code in Haskell than it is to write it in C, which I wouldn't necessarily argue that, okay? That's a fine argument to make, that you can say that it's easier to write, like, again, when I first started learning Rust, it was easier to write a Go program faster than it was to write a Rust program because I kept finding myself cloning and doing silly things. So, fair, totally fair. But you can't say that in an absolute sense, meaning that anybody writing C can, or writing Haskell will ne necessarily be faster than writing C. So it's kind of like you're getting the benefits of the high level. Like you can code how, how, how it should be read, right? I'm coding for another programmer. I'm just making it very readable. But then the compiler can kind of transform it into something that's better to be executed on the machine. Okay, that's number one. That's optimization. But number two is potentially even bigger. And that is that oh, gosh. Haskell lets you use better data and algorithms. And I need to explain because, okay, yeah. yes, they're both Turing complete. Okay, so let's take that argument. I agree, but let's take it off the table. No one made that argument. Brian Cantrell. Uh, Though that does sound like an argument uh, Hasklers would make. Well, are they too? Okay, they are Turing complete. Okay, just making sure. Uh, actually made this argument, and that's where I got the idea for this episode from. He was talking about Rust, but it applies equally to Haskell. So he has been doing a lot of system programming in his career, and a lot of it is done in C because it needs to be low level. And his his argument goes like this. Well, in C, you know, if you need a data structure, um, it's in C, it's just kind of hard to do anything more complex than a linked list. Or, you know, maybe you could get a little bit more complicated, but a linked list is kind of, you know, you write linked lists all day long because that's like, it's something that you know you're not going to mess up. And it. Oh, man, you just got question marks from low level learning. When you get this many question marks from LLL, you know he's upset. When, they, when he says this, this isn't a good representation, right? You're kind of straw manning the average C developer or what the average C development experience is. Oh, since you can only do linked list in C, that's what you do. I mean, granted, I've written a lot of linked list in C. So fair take in that sense that you do write linked list in C. They're very great to write it. But you can also write a tree in C. A linked list is a tree. It's just a one-sided weighted tree, right? It's the worst optimization of a tree. You can also write arrays. You can also write dynamic arrays in C. Does the job and it's fine, right? Hash maps. Well, can Haskell still can actually, because it's higher level, it can actually manage much more complex data structures and do so in a correct way. Right? So you can write, it gives you tools to write data structures that are known to be more efficient for certain access patterns, right? And linked lists are very linear. They, so, so every, you know, not every access. If you access the first thing, it's not, it's constant, but in general, you're accessing things Constant with the inside the list uh, randomly, right? Let's just say that's what your algorithm is. And so any access, so you're, so you're accessing stuff randomly, that's linear. And so if you do that in a loop, wow, you're quadratic already, right? So in Haskell, you can replace that linked list with something else, like let's say a tree, right? So now you're actually- I just claimed, I just made the claim that a linked list is a tree. Let me explain why I say a linked list is a tree. All right, so we got a little linked list here, right? A goes to B, B goes to C. Okay, are you ready for this? Are you ready? It's a tree. Yeah, yeah. The conspiracy theories were correct. Linked lists are an effing tree. Yeah, this is an unbalanced binary search tree on accident. Didn't even, I know, I know. People, people are shook right now. Just, I'm just saying that we could totally do this. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. The only point here is that most data structures are somewhat swappable. Like your implementation can be abstracted over data structures. That is still copium. It is still copium. I agree with it. But I, you know, I'm just letting you know. Like when you say something like you can replace a linked list with a tree, you've effectively said nothing at all, right? because a linked list is a tree. Now, if you wish to have a second link, instead of having, say, a next, you can just name it left instead of next, and then you can have right for the other side.
So you're saying a linked list is just a unary tree? I mean, really, it's just a it's just a poorly formed binary tree. If you think about it, that's all it is, is it's just a bad binary tree. Now you could say, okay, well, technically you don't use the memory position for each one, which is also a graph. It's also a graph. This one would be an acyclic directed graph, commonly referred to as a DAG. Okay, um, I have a meeting at uh, 1300, but I want to see how this ends. Okay, let, I'll keep on going. I'm going to keep on going. I'm sorry. I'm just, I just need to get that out there just because it's, it's very important for people to understand that, that point. Access is logarithmic. You've already saved a bunch of time uh, in terms of complexity, time complexity. And so that is another way that Haskell benefits over C. That if By the way, I do want to make one quick thing. Uh, by using a tree or a linked list, you could be inefficient as compared to using something like a array. So if you had some values that could be stored on on the stack and you had and you had a nice like array, a contiguous memory spot, y even though you have to search in a linear time, it can be faster than O of one access, such as a set, because A, you're not jumping around to crazy memory spots, but B, you're doing this really close locality of memory searches, whereas it's very hard to do that with something like uh, like a tree. You can't, I mean, you could, you could, a heap is an array if you think about it. So could you model something like that? Yeah, you could, you could, you could heap it hard and say the same thing. But again, now you're just like, the argument is completely lost here, which is choosing, like, of course, doing a quadratic search over a large set of items is always going to be slower than a logarithmic search over a large set of items, right? When I say oh, large, I mean, N has to be sufficiently sized. The problem is complicated enough where, or big enough, no where a linked list. No Haskell? Really? You should. The difference between an access complexity and the big O notation complexity between a linked list and a, and a tree, boom, it's, it's a big enough difference, Haskell's going to win. <laughs> but, but just make it a tree and see. That's not an argument. Just make it a tree and see. And it's simply a matter of... Um, how I do see what he's saying, though, is that it's very simple to have this tree in Haskell. So if you program it like a 1D grug head, then yes, it's easier to do that. But this is kind of like, it's, it's too much of a straw man for me to accept. How much complexity can you handle? Now, of course, if someone wrote a tree in C and you imported that library and you, you know, included it in your C code, you would start competing again with Haskell, right? You could do that, sure. Um, but... Uh, do you do that? Is that a possibility? In these benchmarks, it might not be a possibility. Whereas in Haskell, you could do that. You could write it yourself. Um, and I find that this is the case a lot of times in um, higher level languages. You know, it's a spec. Okay, I got to say it one more time. A linked list is a tree. If you can write a linked list, you could write a tree. The end. Right? C is very low level. Java's higher level than C. But then Scala is higher level than Java. Clojure is higher level than Java. Um, so it's a spectrum. And what happens is as you tackle these benchmarks, sure, C is going to win because it's very small problems, right? It's like, you know, calculating uh, something with a known algorithm, right? So like people have been optimizing the C algorithm for that Such as a tree. for years. So they know exactly how like to make it the fastest. Um, but when you're dealing with more real world problems, bigger problems, uh, very often you do need garbage collection and um, higher, uh, a better concept of, of data type um, and data structure than C will give you. And so that's uh, what happens. So just at so if he's saying you can only rely on what's built into C, then yeah, I could understand that because you pretty much just have arrays. I get that tree issue. Yeah, it's not a skill issue; it's a tree issue. Like I mean, I understand the argument that Haskell gives you more out of the box, and thus you can solve a lot of things in a more efficient way just off the rip. Agreed. I think we can all agree with that. If that's the argument he's making, then I think I get that argument, right? Like, just like with C++, how easy is it to make a vector? It's very, very simple. The STL is, is very, very good, right? And so, yeah, it, does that mean C++ is faster than C? No. Is it easier to get off the ground in, than C? Sure, right? Can you do the same thing in Rust? Absolutely. Is it easier to get off the ground in Rust than C++? Well, you have to dye your hair blue first, but you get the idea. It can be easier. And so it's like, is that... Is that, like, are those fair comparisons? I wouldn't say they're fair comparisons. As, and, and it's not just about data structure. There's other facilities of the language. Um, just as a little anecdote, I heard a story once where um, there was a competition to see who could write the fastest program, and it was C versus Java. And it surprised everyone, especially the C programmers, but the Java implementation won. And it won by a lot. And 
uh, the C people were like, no, it's not possible. It's, you know, how could this big monstrous VM beat our highly tuned tiny little C program? And uh, they started reading the Java code. And, you know, you can imagine them like huddled there with their printouts like, ah, then they all say, no, look, they cheated. And what they were pointing at was in Java, they had used threads. They used multiple threads to solve the problem. Whereas in C, they didn't. Okay, C11 has the new thread API. The one before it has P threads. Can you not use just threads, right? Like, what is this? This doesn't sound fair. If you have a st if you have a problem that could be massively parallelized easily, then of course it's faster than not parallelizing it. And they considered that cheating. Well, yeah. If you weren't but okay, it, that's fair. If you were told which program is faster at doing X and you assume that you can't use threads, that is totally fair take to go, oh, that's cheating. We didn't think you could do that. Of course we could make this faster. You want us to use threads as well? P threads came out and who knows what, but it was C11, right? C11 has the new uh, thread API, right? Which apparently is really nice. C11 uh, thread, uh, thread threads, right? There's like a, it's it's this new, yeah, you get you get all these like, you get this new nice, operations for very beautiful, nice thread stuff that makes things a little bit easier to use, uh, which seems really, really nice. Uh, I have never, I haven't used, I, I haven't built a lot of things in, in C. The last time I built something in C was a video driver uh, last year, and the time before that was a Twitch IRC bot was it in C. That was fun. I liked the Twitch IRC bot. I want to do that again. I want to do that again. But let's keep on going. So C, you can see the, you can see the, the problem here, right? Like, you can see why they consider it cheating because they're used to benchmarks where it's just one thread, purely sequential code. And it is really hard to write threads in C compared to Java. And in Java, it's very easy to write threads. Is that true? I, I'd say in some senses, probably true. Is it? You don't think so? I mean, I think there's some things that are easier in Java to write threads for, right? Like just like in Rust, it's really easy to write a thread in Rust. Right? And to do stuff and not die in some weird way. Uh, but beyond that, like, if you're vaguely familiar with the pthreads library, I feel like you should be able to easily do this. Fearless concurrency! I know, it's not really a fair comparison. Of course, things are easier in Java in the sense that you, you spawn a thread. Right? And you just have way less things you have to be concerned with because you have so much help from the garbage collection and all that. But at the end of the day, is it that much easier? The hard part isn't in spawning of threads. The hard part is not effing yourself and creating mutexes or atomics that you have to constantly rely on to be able to do anything. The hardest part is the parallelization, which is equally hard in any language. I don't know about this. I, I'm actually curious. I'm most curious on L, uh, low level learnings one. P thread, create my thread. Boom, let's go. Right? I, to me, the parallelization, not the thread. Yeah, threading seems easy. It's the communication between threads that is hard. Do you have a non-locking queue that I can add stuff to? Are we using semaphores? Are we using mutices? What are we using to control all the stuff? Right? Uh, that's one thing I've been wanting to play uh, more around with um, in Rust is I always use a semaphore and a series of clients to send stuff out. Why not spawn hardware threads and use, and use non-blocking queues to divvy up the work and try that out? To me, that sounds actually like a more fun experience to do. Well, I'd like to try that. Yeah, go wait groups, another exact same version. Yeah, spawning, spawning uh, thread-like material in Go is the easiest. I just go like this, go funk, go funk yourself. So does that mean Go is superior to C? Well, I mean, I, I would argue no. And to start it's new different. threads. And... So, uh, you know, yes, what do you do? It is. What do you do? Who won? Well, I say the Java people won because that's the whole point of Java is it makes those kinds of things easy. It makes threads on, you know, cross-platform really easy. Uh, it makes garbage collection cross-platform really easy. And I think that the same thing is true of Haskell. You know, if it makes um, writing a data structure that gives you an advantage over a linked list, let's say, easy. And so that's what you get. That's what, that's why it's faster. All right. If you, um, 
have some ideas about why Haskell is faster, where, about these high level languages, how they could be faster than a low level language where you get to control everything and highly tune the, you know, the, the code down to individual instructions, if that's the kind of thing you like doing. How is that even possible? Um, do you agree with me? Uh, disagree? I'd love to know. You can go to lispcast.com slash podcast. You can find ways to contact me, email, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, you can also find all the past episodes. They have audio, video, and transcripts, text transcripts. I, I find his comparison completely unfair. The first part I found actually to be the most compelling, right? The, the first part was the most compelling, meaning that it is very easy that there's a lot of really great optimizations that can be done with, say, pure functions and stuff that just makes it really easy to do the right thing. To me, that seems like that seems like a, a valid answer, right? Okay, you're right. Maybe it's easier to do the right thing in the 80% case. True. But to claim that it's faster is just silly. I can talk about part two if you want, but it's too hard to do in chat. NeoVim runs uh, into that problem. What, what do you mean part two? Can you talk about part two? Oh, writing your own data structures in, Neo, uh, in C? I mean, the hard part of, uh, yeah, is part two argument, writing the right data structure. I mean, the hard part about it is just C, right? You, there's, it's very, you, can't, you don't really have generics. You can't make a, a, I mean, I've seen someone do it with macros, which is disgusting, but you can build a tree dedicated to a singular data type. You know, I, I, I mean, I understand that it's, it's harder in C, right? I've written enough C to know that it's harder in C to do things. Like being hard in C it's not just about generics. It's probably about the code and reuse. Yeah, 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 exactly. No, I'm on your team. I mean, generics is what makes these a lot of these things more reusable. But he's not saying it right, though. I know. I'm on your team. I'm fully on your team. I, I know I know the, the general problems of C. Uh, someone who, I've written enough C to know that I'm bad at C. Right? I know, I've written enough C to know that I would probably write Rust faster generally just because I could write it faster and I could probably be more correct faster. In general, C has generics. Really, are you, gonna, are you gonna toss like a void star at me next? That's the generic. No npm and C, literally unusable. Fair. Fair. Void star D's nuts. Uh, anyways, it's not just about code you write. It's also about getting a code from other people and being able to replace parts of your stack. Yep. No, all that's completely fair. C makes it harder for sure. 100%. I am 100%. The, the thing is, is it's not. So the phrase, how is Haskell faster than C is just wrong. What it is, is Haskell has better development experience than C would be the better thing to do. Would be the better thing to say, because absolutely anything you can write in Haskell, you can write in C. All right. All right. It's easier. Uh, idiomatic Haskell is faster than C. You can't say that either. You can't say that because I don't know if that's true, right? You have to show me the pro I mean, you can't say that. You can't say that idiomatic Haskell is faster than C. Because C, that's copium. That is copium. Idiomatic Haskell is faster than C is copium. Dude, these, the, the comments on this video on YouTube are going to literally just be filled with either Haskell lovers and telling me I'm wrong or people going, what the hell's happened here? Yeah, it's not just compared to dick measuring in benchmarks. Uh, then it would be quite valid take. This is fair. Uh, how is Haskell faster than C? Once again, yeah, I know. I know you're playing the devil advocate. I'm on, I, I understand what you're saying. I just don't think it's a good... I just generally don't like those kind of arguments. Again, as I made the argument earlier today, which we'll pull up here, comparing speed, uh, not difficulty. C wins in speed. Yeah, that's fair. If you're saying it's easier to write stuff in Haskell, I'm probably on your team, honestly. Right? Look at this. I even tweeted this out this morning. If you do an X is faster than C article, it only means one thing. You're not writing C right. Right? Like, this is 100%. I even pre-gamed this article with a tweet because I knew for a fact this is what was going to happen at the end of the article, which was literally skill issue at the end. How did I miss? Uh, I, did, yeah, I know. It is charut, charut, charut. It's always that. It's always that. 
Pre-watched, pre-watched. Yeah. Plus, typically, that's not the question we want to ask. Okay, so what's the more interesting question, I think, to ask? Which is, how easy is it to write fast code? To me, that's the more interesting one. And so something like Rust makes a more compelling argument, or something like Go. Go is the 99% case. It's still really fast, but it's really easy to write. And so to me, that's like the, uh, what's it called? That's the better argument to make, which is how do you generally write fast code? Use a language that generally produces fast code. Now, is it going to be the fastest? No, it will not be the fastest. But will it be fast enough? That's what you have to ask yourself, right? Odin might win that. Odin could win that. Odin, Odin's a very interesting language that I wish I had more time to play with. I just wish I had more time, but uh, OCaml's my next one, right? JavaScript allows you to write really fast in the beginning, and then you hit what I call like the sea of complexity, where as you start writing, you start hitting these things where things start falling apart in weird ways. I think this generally is what uh, he wanted to say, except that Haskell is not easy to write. Yes, I know. That's, the, that's, that's what I'm laughing on the inside about, which is Haskell is historically not known to be easy to write. Like that's not one of the phrases you would use to describe your Haskell experience, which is easy to write. That's just not it. Right, like I mean, to, even to get started in Haskell, how much of your wardrobe do you need to replace with tie-dye T-shirts? Like that's another thing. I don't even know if it's true, right? Like, how many do I need before I can even be remotely effective? Then someone's gonna explain a monad to you, but using a burrito, and you're gonna be so confusing, so confused. All right, hey, the name is I'll probably never learn Haskell, but I'm definitely gonna learn OCaml again.